So we're going to try to figure out how to get this off this pallet, which I don't think is possible. We got a call from um, the shipping company saying, if you see in the background there, that my car lift is here. The delivery guy called me and he was like, hey, do you have people there or do you have a forklift? I was like, no, it's a residential delivery. Ooh, how many people do you have? It's like, just me and my buddy, man. And uh, he says, with this big sigh, I think we can do it. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, uh, we can get it out. Um, it's a scissors lift. Uh, I bought this one from Obsessed Garage from Matt Mormon there. It's not the tall one he has, but it's the identical one he has, less the height. I'm gonna unload this lift, or at least try to, and get back to building the cabinet. So here is the lift I ordered from Obsessed Garage. This one's like a half height one. Uh, my ceilings aren't that tall, but it is nice to work on things, you know, belly level especially, because that's my uh, center of gravity right there. Also, I work on motorcycles a lot. So that's another reason I got this. Hopefully, it doesn't look long enough to fit a motorcycle this way. It might be long enough to fit a motorcycle this way. I never thought of that, but that would actually be perfect because I do have a sidecar motorcycle. And if I could bring it in this way, that might be perfect. I'm gonna start unpacking, see how it looks, see if it's damaged. If it's damaged, I just talked to Matt's team there at Obsessed Garage, uh, and they said they'll uh, help me take care of it because it did get lost in shipping for about four days. And then it arrived with this big hole in the box to me, no one makes a box that big, and that's what's in this box. I think that part's missing. Kyle over at Obsessed Garage um, mentioned, unfortunately, Matt's lift also showed up this way, and his is perfect. So, let's get unpacking and see what it looks like. Use at least 17 people to assemble. Holy shit. No. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about removing it from the pallet. Uh, Mark over here figured out that we gotta plug it into the hydraulics and lift it. And then we can get the bolts that it was used to uh, uh, attach to the pallet. So this wheel was loose in the box. It's missing this, uh, I don't know what these are called. Um, but I know I, I bought the tools for those things. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to buy another one of those, but here's the wheel there. So Mark, uh, wheel it on, boss. I don't think that would have come off. I don't think they put it on. Yeah, it's such a weird thing to... To just pop off? Yeah. So, all right, cool. Well, it stays on without it. I'm not planning on actually moving this thing once. 
it's like place and forget. Yeah. So cool. Well, let's unwrap this and see if it's broken. So it's actually pretty crazy how many batteries you have to have when you film absolutely everything. I think we've gone through six, seven batteries today. Anyways, so this all looks good. Uh, some scratches here. Is what it is. Uh, so this is a twin Bosch lift that Matt Mormon apparently has made popular. Uh, it seems to work for him. I think there's a, a annoying beeping noise when you go up and down. Matt seemed to have jimmy rigged that so it doesn't beep. I'll probably do the same thing. Uh, which, you know, he probably just unscrew this and uh, disconnect the alarm. Everything looks fine here. We did see on here that whoa nails nearly put my foot through there this got chafed up but it doesn't look like it's broken oh there's some exposed wire but i think it'll all be fine the bigger challenge is clearly shipping damages things but you can see these bolts hanging out those used to be attached to chunks of wood to attach this lift to a pallet like that chunk of wood but this pallet is destroyed. So twin, bush, bosh, whatever your name is, buy some metal pallets. I've been in the business of importing for eight years. I imported about 400 containers a year for eight years. And I know a thing or two about pallets. So if you need some help, give me a call. So we're gonna try to figure out how to get this off this pallet which I don't think is possible. So guys, garage essential. Something just to keep, even though they're pretty crappy. You get a two-ton, fifty-dollar car jack, and then a motorcycle jack. We would have not been able to do anything without that motorcycle jack. We've managed to remove the pallet. Um, the lift is now floating. We are going to put it in position, but there's still chunks of wood under there and bolts where the pallets were. So we have to put it in position, which will be center right here. Then I have to go get hydraulic fluid. Then we have to lift it with the scissors. And then that's the only time we'll be able to remove these pieces of wood. But for now, we're gonna put it in position. I'm gonna put the hydraulic pump this side because I assume most of the time I'll be working in this area. Uh, so since there's gonna be hydraulic pipes on the ground and I think I estimated this about eight feet long it'll fit perfectly here just where I put an outlet that doesn't exist marvelous so we are running to Napa Auto Parts to get hydraulic fluid for the twin bush if that's how you say it lift uh, it needs ISO 32 hydraulic fluid which I don't believe it says in the manual, but now that I know that is the thing, <laughs> I might see it. Or AW32 hydraulic fluid. Um, one and a half to two and a half gallons. Um, so I'll probably buy three. And then we should have the lift up and running if those wires aren't snapped in the next 35 minutes. Let's clock that. Ooh, maybe 45 minutes. <laughs> 45 minutes, 45 minutes, 3.45 now at uh, whatever that is, plus 45 minutes, it would be 25, 4.25, we should have it running if we don't run into driver. <laughs> Bye. Back at the house, picked up our AW32 hydraulic fluid. Uh, looks like we got 30 minutes left on my clock that I set to get this lift up and running. Shouldn't be a problem. Oh my god, that's heavy. Woo. Okay, that was dumb. I do have a hernia because I'm fat. So, doing all of this uh, heavy lifting is not good. But anyways. 
it'll be good content uh, if I blow out my stomach and have to call 911 and I got the GoPros going. <laughs> Probably not. I'll just be filming my death. Anyways, here comes the time lapse of us getting it ready. Plug it in. Put the fan off. Thank you, sir. I think you do this. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. We got the green light. Now there's gonna be a stupid beep, I'm sure. Okay. So it is pumping the hydraulic fluid. You can see it's getting lower. Oh, the lift's getting up. Damn, that's quick. All right, so this is what we were talking about earlier. Yes, this is what we needed. So Mark, just be careful. There may be air in the pipe. Uh, <laughs> so this thing might close. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. On your hands. <laughs> and then bye bye fingers. Matt from Obsessed Garage said this was a pain. I just saw a mouse, damn it. I hate mice. Uh, to level. It seems like it's self-leveled, but I do think mine's a bit different to his. I don't recall his having these holes here. Ooh, that one's gonna be tough. It's bent. If only you had a whole set of tools. <laughs> Guys, we are not using the new tools yet until this garage is built. Only that getting dirty. Those are tools for looking at, not for using. I'm going to use all these old tools. I'm just here to get good looking tools in the garage. By the way, this is Mark. He's my brother-in-law. <sighs> Unfortunately, we just missed the ice cream man because we were Aww. racing against our timeline. I don't have my phone on me, but I think we won. Oh, there it is. 428. <laughs> Must have gone three minutes ago. Perfect time. So here's the up. Goes up relatively quick. That's nice. Let's see how high it goes. Okay, so I think that's the highest it goes. Uh, which it's not too tall, but it's tall enough to do an oil change on my little bench there. Uh, it's perfect for changing tires and brakes. So that's good. And I don't have enough garage space to have a taller one. One day when, you know, I make more money, I can, you know, blow down my garage or blow up my roof and get rid of my bedroom. So Mark, what's the verdict? What's it say? Foot protector. Foot protector? Oh, so you don't leave your feet in there when it's going down? Oh. <laughs> well, we may as well put them on. Like toes. Yeah, toes are good. Especially when they attach to your feet. So, that's it for the day. Thanks for tuning in, as always. Be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Still got about four or five more videos in finishing this garage. I know it's taken long. But believe me, it's much longer than how long you've been watching. But, I do think this is turning in to my green dream garage setup uh, I need to hook up my extra lights here uh, I don't think I'm gonna bolt the lift to the ground it did come with ground bolts I will you know think about it and then I'm gonna work on emptying those benches putting all my stuff in these drawers and then start opening all these sweet sweet tools and saran wrap and I'll be going over what they all are still need to put a TV up here um, and then I still need to obviously clean all of this mumbo I have all my cleaning equipment from obsessed garage I need to open and figure out where it goes 
and display it nicely so I can start cleaning my cars. So thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check out the next video.